How's it going, blokes out there in YouTube land? It's me! You love me! For some reason. So you know how I don't collect vinyl? Well, that kind of changed yesterday. I do collect vinyl, but I don't buy it as my preferred format. I bought a shitload of vinyl yesterday, and we're going to talk about it. While I talk about it, the hideous noise going on in the background is going to be... Dark Fortress with Tales from the Eternal Dusk. This is an awesome release. A lot of really underrated band. Um, Red Stream put this out in 98. Think if you merged maybe Stormblast era Demi Borger with Somberlane era Dissection, you'd have something like this. Great, great band so my friend my best friend is getting rid of some all I don't know of his vinyl collection and I was able to make a big nice purchase of some things um, he's got some stuff that is really valuable that I I feel like I, instead of getting the buddy discount which I could on a lot of this stuff um, I, I would rather he get top dollar for it um, so if I, if I, if he puts them on Discogs or eBay or whatever, I'll let you know. Um, I don't want you guys just flipping out on me saying, well, let me, give, me, give me the rest of his stuff. Um, because this is a hell of a, a, a haul here. So, yeah, let's get into this. This is a good record. Uh, first off, Twist. With Four Kunsten Mavievig This was a really early favorite for me. Um, and I feel like looking back, I'm really lucky that I discovered this album as early as I did. Um, I want to say it came out originally in 95. And it, it probably came into my possession. I bought it from probably Redstream back in 96 or 7 or something like that. It's a phenomenal album. Um, Reminds me quite a bit of kind of like Battles in the North era, Immortal, but there's a little bit more variation going on to it. But anyways, this is the perverted taste version that came out in 2003, the first time it found its way on vinyl. Um, Peaceville has reissued this since then in 2013. And I gotta say, now that I'm holding this thing, I don't know what happened to it. It almost feels like soda got spilled all over it or something. I don't I don't think that actually did happen, but like the, the paper or the plastic or whatever that they used to print it, it's kind of weird. Um, so next we've got, sorry, this is the second time shooting this video, and so some of these records are already on sleeves, taken apart, whatnot. Um, but given recent events, this is quite a crazy thing to find. Uh, Judas Iscariot, The Cold Earth's Let Below. Not my favorite Judas Iscariot album, but my first on vinyl. Um, limited to 666 copies. Um, I, I don't know how this happened, honestly, because I think Moribund has the rights to most of Judas Iscariot's albums. Uh, to do them on vinyl, I, I don't know. I, it's not worth going over, but uh, there, yeah, have that. <laughs> not gonna get that from Ascension Money, it's media, are ya? Next we've got a band that kind of sounds quite a bit like Dark Fortress. This is Fog. Through the eyes of night, winged they come. This is a really, really underrated band. Um, after Morpheus Descends quit or broke up or whatnot, one of the guys moved to Indiana and started this label, Dark Horizon, uh, and was in this band, Fog. Really, really awesome stuff. Symphonic, great riffing. Um, it's really well produced. I think mainly <laughs> the reason a lot of people don't know about this band or album, the album cover sucks. Let's just get that out of the way. Um, and they just didn't. They just were not really on a label that a lot of people know about. This is limited to 500 copies, and you know, Dark Horizon is just, they put out some decent stuff, but 
It just seems like they didn't have good distribution or I don't really know what the deal is, but Fog is a killer, killer band. Next we've got Lugabrum with Divot Quicken. I love, love this album cover. Iron Pegasus put this out back in 2003 probably. Hand numbered, limited to 500. Really, really weird, weird, nasty, raw black metal. Got another one from Lugabrum. This is Heligat Watson. Um, I love that. Look at the schlong on that statue. So, um, they began to self-release their own albums in 2006, and I think this is the first vinyl uh, release of uh, Lugabrum. Some of their older albums later got reissued uh, on vinyl by the label that they're on now. I can't think of what that's called. Um, I have a couple of their albums from that era. Uh, next, we've got a band that also is very underrated. Tenebrae in Perpetuum. This band is from Italy. Uh, this is their second album. It's really, really grim and raw, atmospheric. You know the drill. Uh, Debimer Morty put this one out. Also kind of suffers from a eh, album cover and kind of a forgettable logo and name, but they're really, really, really good. Can't say enough good things about these guys. I'm pretty sure all of these are on black vinyl. No, I'm wrong, but you know, there's really none of, these, none of these are really on any crazy vinyl variants or splatters. Next we've got Dark Angel. So I bought these next two, Time Does Not Heal and Leave Scars, because I thought they were original, but they're actually back on black reissues from 2006 oh, maybe. Um, I don't think I've, I may have only heard this album once or twice, um, so I'm looking forward to digging into it. I've kind of, I've meant to get a copy of it um, for a couple of years, because Time Does Not Heal is one of my favorite thrash records. Um, for some reason this fell into my lap very early on when I was first starting to explore the thrash metal genre, um, and I fucking love this album so much. Um, if it weren't for Ron Reinhardt's really hard to stomach vocals. I would put this up there, one of my top ten records probably. The riffs on this fucking thing, Gene Hoagland's insane drumming. This is just a fucking masterpiece. But uh, you know, over time, I guess, and being that this was such an early album for me to get into. I think that has afforded Ron Reinhardt's performance um, some credibility, I guess, from me. Um, it's passable. I can live with it um, because I love the record so much. But, dude, his vocals. Ugh. I would really rather have anybody else singing on that. Next we've got Within the Sylvan Realms of Frost by Demon Sea. This was recently reissued, I believe, on Nuclear War Now, and I actually already have a copy of this, but the vinyl that I already have of this is kind of fucked up. It's something I have never seen before. Um, might as well, while we're here, check this one out and make sure that this isn't also on here. Looks good. Um, from the looks of it, on the other LP that I have, it almost looks like some super glue, like a drop of super glue just like fell onto the record and some paper got stuck to it. I bought it from a member of the band, a guy who used to be in the band, and now plays in A Destuo, which is formerly known as Incursus. Um, this is limited to. Since it's Samba Records, I'm going to maybe guess two or three hundred copies. Next, we've got a fucking Holy Grail masterpiece. Um, I didn't realize how rare this was, I guess, until I bought it for my friend. On Spiritism. On Spiritism from Armageddon. Definitely my first... No, I have an Armageddon 7-inch. Um, my first full-length from Armageddon on uh, Wax. This is their last album. It's fucking awesome. Um, it's really, really interesting to see how this band got weirder and weirder and weirder. Um, 
Yeah, good stuff. Agonia Records. I'm not sure the limitation on this one. And honestly, I don't even think I've looked to see if it's on Black Wax. It probably is, yeah. But uh, this, I think, came out in 2004. This band really burned out quickly and went on to form London. Next, we've got an album that I played in one of my videos a couple of videos ago. This is Necrofrost with Bloodstorms, Voktes over Hiringurid's Dungle Necrotarner. Got that? This is some fucking grim, primitive German black metal on Aphelion Productions. Hand numbered, limited to 500. You can get this really, really cheap. No insert. Next, we've got an old school one. I don't think I've ever heard of this album, come to think of it. Turn Back Trilobite by Sacrifice. Metal Blade Records. Yeah, not much to say about that because I've never heard it. I have a sacrilege, like, I think Century Media 2 album release kind of deal. Now I've got a fucking banger. Behexen. By the Blessing of Satan. Their second or third album, I want to say. Um, who did put this out? Blute and Eisen. I almost think this should have been on the cover instead of that. This is one of those flimsy guys. There we go. What do you think this should have been on the inside and the band photo should have been on the outside? This was the album cover. I don't know, confusing. Still haven't looked to see if this is on black vinyl either. Yeah. Not a lot of colors or splatter variants back in this day. Um, man, this is a masterpiece. The Monad of Creation by Mournful Congregation. I played this last night and, oh, I just, I cling to every note on this album. It's so just emotive and emotionally draining. It's gorgeous. And when my buddy got this on vinyl, I was so fucking jealous, and it's been on my want list ever since then. Came out limited to 300 copies, hand numbered, 69. Paniac vinyl is pretty hard to come by. It's actually a three-sided LP. I went to turn it over from C to D last night, and I was like, what's going on? Next, we've got another one from Tenebrae in Perpetuum. Um... Their first album, that's right. Um, Honori Funebri Rituali. Um, Serpens Kaput put this out back in probably 01. No inserts on any of these things from this era. That's weird, you never see the sticker on the jacket there. Uh, black vinyl, nasty Italian black metal. These guys are riff masters. Next, we've got perhaps one of the greatest death metal records of all time. Altars of Madness by Morbid Angel. Covenant, yeah, I, I will agree. On some days, uh, that's the best death metal album ever recorded. Um, what's your opinion? Uh, I don't know what year issue this is. Um, obviously, it's not very new. Probably not too long after the original release in 91. Um, it's got a little bit of crap on it, but I don't know. I almost paid like $75 for this a couple of months ago at a store. A nice insert there. Black, I assume. Yeah. Beautiful. It's in great shape. I don't know. This says 89. Um, he's got some, my buddy's got some other earache releases like Carcass, um, I was kind of thinking about getting those and I still might, I suppose, but, um, earache, early vinyl earache, um, uh, albums actually aren't as valuable as you might think. Um, it seems like they were just well distributed. They made plenty of copies of them for back then. So you should be able to pick up a copy of this for $50 or so, I would say depending on 
condition and which version. Two more. Another one that I've always was jealous of my buddy for having a copy of. <laughs> Crucifixion by Catharsis. I love the beautiful layout on this fucking thing. Look at this. Oh, I love the lettering going on there. If you have a copy of the last Satan's Almighty Penis album, uh, Pulsing Feral Spire, I hand drew all of the lettering for all the song titles on the back of it. And it was because of albums like this that made me want to do that. Let's see if there's anything in here. Nothing will ever top Catharsis is a world without end. Black vinyl. Little poster. Little stapled zine kind of thing or booklet from the beginning days of Norma Evangelium Diaboli. Yeah, great, great stuff. Won't give it all away. But lastly, we've got Infinity with Non de Hoc Terra. So Obscure Abhorrence put this one out on vinyl. And Obscure Abhorrence, I don't know how they did it. They had a lot of money to put into some nice editions of bands who never really caught on, I guess. Um, this is a double splatter LP. No, it isn't. Single, sorry. Have a look at that. Cover art by Necrolord from 2012. It's got this nice, giant fucking booklet. I haven't listened to this yet, so I couldn't really comment on what this album is like. But this band is really, really underrated. Um, I can't remember where they're from. Maybe Polish? Um, but I've got three or four of their releases, and they're really, really killer. Still putting out good stuff to this day. Mm, the paper smells great. So yeah, pick that up, and I, I think you should be able to find this for pretty cheap, but it's a gorgeous release. Yeah, that Necrolore artwork deserves to be seen in 12 inches, if not bigger. So, that's my vinyl haul. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.